Welcome back to the Broad Podcaster, here in the Highland Lakes with me, Jennifer Piero, with this guy, Art Lugans, the voice of the Lando Yellow Jacket. We've already wrapped up all three 11-man football teams here in the Highland Lakes. If you want to know about the Lando Yellow Jackets, please make sure you go to segment one. Segment two is all about the Burning Bulldogs and the Marble Falls Mustangs, and we're going to devote this last segment to the six-man teams in Burnett County, Faith Academy, and Smoking for Jesus. Now, three of those teams are going to play TAPS teams. I believe Kerrville, Our Lady of the Hills, is a TAPS team, and that's where Smoking for Jesus is headed. They are playing on Friday night. I believe that is a 7.30 kickoff, and it is, and they are in Kerrville for that one. Here's what fascinates me about that particular matchup art. Russ Roberts was the head coach at Faith Academy when I believe Our Lady of the Hills was in the same district with Faith Academy. So he's very familiar with that coaching staff. Don't know about the personnel, and that's if they haven't made any changes. I think the Eagles, though, they're going to walk in there. They just lost to... um, May High School. They were unbeaten, I think. A top five team in the UIL. They lost 58 to 12. Mm-hmm. I could not tell if they were mercy ruled or not. Could not tell that. Yeah. Um, and have not been able to tell since then. But if this is, because they've gone back to back weeks now playing two top 10 teams. They lost to Jonesboro the week before at home. So they play two two top 10 UIL teams from the same district. Now they're going to a TAPS team and are going to be facing a TAPS team on the road. Does that start district for Smoking for Jesus? No, because Smoking for Jesus is in that that, um, Texas Association of Independent Athletic Organizations. Very nice. It is a very different association than TAPS. TAPS is... in my mind, TAPS is the number one yes. private school, parochial schools, sports-related extracurricular. So is Smoking for Jesus in a district? According to Coach Frazier, they are. Okay. But I cannot tell how they determine a district. I cannot tell how teams advance in the playoffs. I can't tell how many <laughs> games you have to win in the playoffs to be a state champ. You know, all of the things that we're used to with the UIL. Everybody knows in UIL, to be a state champion, you got to win six playoff games. Everybody knows that. So I can't tell with Tao. Not everybody, but most everybody. <laughs> I can't tell with Tao what I, – I just can't tell. Okay, okay. So, anyway, now, what about Faith? Faith opens district play okay. against Waco Lido Classical, the same team that beat them for the state championship – Last year. Close game. Uh, like yes. Like 46 41 or something. Yes. Like, in other words, I believe that Faith had a turnover on downs going for, I can't remember if it was the game winning touchdown or the game tying touchdown. Um, and then they had a turnover on downs and never got the ball back. That, that Live Oak was able to run the clock out. And Faith lost a lot of boys from that team. Nine. No. Nine boys. Um, and, and, Nine boys who were very, very gifted boys. Yes. Nine boys who, um, and, and when I say gifted, I don't just mean talented physically, you know, natural God-given ability. I mean players who were natural leaders, players who excelled in the classroom, players who uh, were involved in, in great When you think of the traits of great leaders and student, being involved in student life, that's what those seniors were. So it'll be interesting to see because Faith was also on a bye last week, just like Mama Falls and Burnett. It'll be interesting to see what Stephen Shipley dials up against Live Oak, in particular because going into the season, there were only two playoff spots available from this district uh, from this TAPS district. And it's how many teams? I want to say it's five total. I think Stephen has has to play four district games. Okay. So, um, and he's got, if, if he can't run the table, if Faith Academy can't run the table, then 
they can't lose anymore. And I, I think that's right because I don't remember if they have, if they, I know that they had two buys in their schedule at one time, but as you know, with TAPS, it's very flexible on scheduling. UIL, not so much. UIL is more rigid. Mm -hmm. um, at any rate, that's what I'm curious to see. I'm also curious to see what which flames will be available to him. My plan is to go and see Coach Shipley uh, after practice early this week. And of course, after I know all of these answers, I will write it up for you on TexasChopTop.com. Please make sure you go there for all of your Highland Lake sports news. It, it will be an interesting time in Burnett County. Smoking for Jesus is still trying to find a footy. There's no doubt this bulked up schedule for them. Because I haven't had a chance really to talk to Charles Frazier. I'm curious to hear, I want to use the word surprise. I guess my question to him would be, because it's not, they too lost a really good senior class. I don't know what surprised him the most with this new schedule. I don't know because the preparation was always there all summer. They prepared, they lifted weights, they did their strength conditioning. I'm curious to see what surprised them with this new schedule. Is it better speed? Is it that they're facing coordinators who know how to better prepare players? Is it that they, uh, the mindset has to go to a different level? I mean, because you and I, when you and I got to Lano Stadium on Friday night, we saw the Jackets as they were exiting the locker room to head to the field. Those Jackets were as serious as you and I are. There was no giggling. There was no ribbing each other. They were ready to go. They were ready to walk out on that field, and they had a mission. And you could see it on their faces as they were waiting for traffic to cross so they could go from the locker room to the field. Well, if you don't show you're ready, then uh, you have a very poor coach uh, who is not as stern as he should be with the boys. And Matt Green is certainly uh, not that. Uh, you are going to look ready uh, in his eyes or you're going to be in trouble. And I think that's true of most good coaches. Sure. And, mm -hmm. But again, I have not had a chance to see Smoking for Jesus. So I'm just curious and that will be one of the questions that I will ask Coach Frazier. What did 2022 teach you and your Eagles that you didn't know until you started this schedule? Good question. And, it, and it's not Believe me when I tell you, the old association they were in, this is exactly why they left. They felt that they were not getting challenged in the ways that they thought they should be as a program. And this new schedule, with the flexibility that this new association gives them to schedule whichever six-man teams they want, TAPS, UIL, TCAP, whoever. Now you're seeing the, the challenge that Charles Frazier talked about from the first of 2022 to see what his boys could really do and see what these Eagles could really do. And I'm curious to hear his thoughts once the season wraps up. Right now is not the time to ask that. Because they still have a few games oh, left. Sure. And if they're able to get in the playoffs, as you know, right now, it's, what is it? What, what's the great saying? Uh, survive in advance. Win in advance. Once you get to the playoffs, that's all that matters is that you just keep advancing. You just find a way to keep advancing. So, okay. Any final thoughts for you before we wrap up here? Well, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, football. Interesting that it comes in the segment where we talked about two fine Christian schools because I'm Jewish and want to wish uh, my Jewish brethren uh, a happy Rosh Hashanah, which was nine days ago, and that's the Jewish New Year. But beginning tonight and all day tomorrow is Yom Kippur, and that's when Jews atone for their sins, and they hope that God 
uh, forgives us for our sins. And more importantly, we uh, should tell uh, the Lord that we will not commit these sins again, number one, and number two, that, that if we ha have committed the sins against a certain person, we should apologize for them. Yom Kippur is the highest holy day on the Jewish calendar. So we've got some good ones, but this is it. So tonight there are services, then tomorrow you're really supposed to stay in the temple or synagogue all day, and you fast, and then there's a break the fast at the end of the day. Okay, so that's Tuesday night and Wednesday all day? Yes. Okay, all right, well then happy New Year. Pastor. Thank you. Okay. For our Deluvage, I'm Jennifer Fierro. Again, please make sure you like, subscribe, and share the channel. And we'll look forward to seeing you once more next week.